I'm so happy you all could be here tonight. We will go ahead and get started. So welcome to orientation. This is an exciting night to kick off the ACE summer. Um, so before we get started, I'll share a little about me. My name is Mara and this is my first summer as the ACE program coordinator. And so far I have treasured the experience of connecting with you and helping you all get started on what I'm sure will be a very exciting summer. I'd like to thank our operations team, namely Walter for supporting the webinar tonight, as well as Saturday Academy's programs and outreach director, Rachel Pecor Valdez, who will be helping manage the chat and Q&A while I give you all lots of important information. If you can, gather a pen and a piece of paper to write down all of the information you hear tonight. We will be giving you through reminders throughout the summer, but it is always a good idea to write down important information as you hear it. And it'll be good practice for your meetings this summer. For our agenda tonight, we're gonna introduce you to our ACE support team. We're gonna cover intern expectations and leave you with some tips for success. As I mentioned, there's a chat and Q&A feature to tonight's webinar that Rachel will be answering questions in. So ask and submit questions as they come up and we'll take some time at the end to address some of the more common ones. But before we get started on your summer, I wanna take a moment to hear about Danny Gem's experience as an ACE intern. Danny was an intern when she was in high school and she followed her path to STEM and community. And today is the National Marketing Manager for Chick Tech, a national nonprofit organization that helps young women learn STEM skills and see themselves as STEM-minded to increase and, re and retain the amount of women in technology industry and workforce. Thanks for coming to share your A story tonight, Danny. Hi everybody, thanks so much, Mara. I'm super excited to be here today. Um, I'm going to share my screen. All right, we good? Screen look good, great, okay. Um, hi everybody again, uh, my name's Danny. Uh, like Maura mentioned, a little over 10 years ago, which is crazy for me to say, I participated in the ACE program as an intern at IBM. I now, today, work for a nonprofit called Chick Tech, which, as Maura said, provides free tech workshops and mentorships for high school girls and non-binary folks across the country. So after such a long time, it's really cool to see that my own career has taken me back to stay involved with Saturday Academy and ACE, and I'm extra excited that I'm able to share some insights with all of you today. But first and foremost, I wanted to say congratulations to all of you. I was taking a look at the internship list, and there are some pretty cool internships that's, uh, that I saw on there. Pretty advanced stuff as well. So um, to make it into this program, which is a tough competitive selection process, is a huge accomplishment all in itself. So just wanted to say congratulations to you. A little bit more about me so that I'm not just quite a random person up here trying to give you advice. Um, a little bit about me and my background with ACE. Um, like I mentioned, I interned at IBM when I was 17 years old, and the main thing I did there was create a free week-long summer camp for middle school girls to learn about STEM. It's funny because I'm doing very similar things today. After that internship, I was really fortunate to be hired by IBM after the ACE internship, and I worked part-time throughout my senior year in high school and transitioned my work a little bit to do web development and communications work for IBM. Currently, I'm the national marketing manager at Chick Tech, and I do visual and web design on the side. Um, at the bottom there, a little thing, a little bit about things I like. I'm a gamer. Um, I like reading books. I have two little fur babies at home, and I live in Portland. So I'm um, really excited to see that the Portland community is still going strong with ACE. So before I really get into sharing my thoughts on making the most out of your internships, I would love to do a few brief polls with you all. So if you either take out your phone or open a um, new browser tab on your computer and go to the link at the top of that screen, um, you can start with that poll question. Give you all a few minutes and let me know if it's given you any trouble. Awesome. 
some see some folks starting to submit their votes. Give you a few more seconds. All right. So as those votes keep coming in, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. Awesome. Okay, so the first question, I don't know yet if this field is perfect for me. Looks like quite a few of you are not sure yet <laughs> that this is what you want to do. A few of you are pretty confident that this is where you want to go. Um, a little bit about this question. When I started my internship, I thought I was pretty sure that I wanted to go into marketing, some sort of program development. Um, I was really confident. I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but this internship really gave me a good understanding of all the things I do really love and also some of the things that I wasn't so sure about and ended up not liking so much. So um, definitely, definitely a good mix in there. Um, second question here should be on your screens now. Um, I worry if I'll be good enough in this field to succeed. Give you a few seconds. Yep. <laughs> so totally get it. So this is what we like to call imposter syndrome. Um, I wanted to touch on this a little bit briefly before going into some advice. Um, this is totally normal to feel like this. Um, it's a very competitive world out there and every single person, as you can clearly see here, struggles with imposter syndrome, feeling like they're not good enough or they're not working hard enough. Um, everyone feels this way and 99.9% .9 of the time, um, you're doing just fine. So it's really good to see that um, although this is a really common feeling, it, um, you know, it, everyone does feel it. So it's not just you that's out there alone feeling this way. I've got one last question for you all. Oh, geez. Yikes. All right. All right. Last question. I already have someone in this field who I can go to for advice or support. Awesome. So it looks like uh, quite a few of you do have a mentor. Um, I'm hoping that that continues to increase as this program goes on. Um, so thank you all so much for answering those questions. And to be honest, uh, the questions that I asked you in these polls were a lot less about the results and more about the questions themselves. So whether you feel really nervous about exploring a totally new field or you're hoping to get serious about this as a career, I have three pieces of advice that I think will help you get the most out of this experience. As you can see here, try weird stuff, find your people and seek out mentorship. So try weird stuff. Um, Regardless of whether you know exactly what subject matter your internship will dive into, I really think it's so important to try things that are completely new to you, things that you've never considered doing before. And I'll give you an example of this in my internship. So like I mentioned, the projects that I mainly worked on was to create a free camp for middle school girls to teach them about STEM. Um, part of that work was to find volunteers at IBM to help teach those workshops to the girls or help with planning various aspects of the camp. So I ended up talking to a few employees who worked for kind of an obscure international business development team. To be honest, I still don't know exactly <laughs> what they do. Uh, it sounded very important and uh, very businessy, traditionally businessy. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to help out with their team to get some experience. The manager and I ended up getting along pretty well. Um, so I said, okay, you know, I would be happy to. And she said, great, we'll have you work on a little bit of data and analytics, research, research sort of stuff for the sales portion of their work. Um, I said, okay. And to be honest, it was more than half out of politeness rather than genuinely being interested in that particular avenue. But I gave it a try. 
Um, after a few weeks of helping out, I was right. I learned, nope, this isn't quite for me. Don't have a huge interest in this. Um, while you think that might be a waste of my time and kind of an awkward situation to be in, um, it was actually invaluable. It's so important, I think, to learn not only what you do like, but what you don't like doing in your work and in this internship. I would highly recommend that you dabble in as many different things as you can, ask all of those questions, learn skills that you didn't think you'd be interested in. Um, you know, sometimes you may find, okay, I was right, I probably wasn't super interested in that, now I know for sure. But there are quite a few times where you'll realize that um, a spark developed in you that opened up a totally new perspective for a skill or a certain career function that you had never thought of before. Next slide, find your people. So as we know from the last year, going through work or school alone can be really tough as we've all experienced for the last year. And as time goes on, it becomes even more and more stressful, even more lonely. In the same way that your social life suffers when you're not connected to people who share your values or your interests or you can just hang out with, uh, it's important to have a really healthy professional network uh, in your career and personal life. So there's two big reasons for this. The first, I think, is fairly straightforward. I'm sure that you've all heard the phrase, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. I like to think that this is kind of half true. Um, people are good at their jobs and they are able to get jobs because of that. I'm sure that all of you are wonderful at what you do. So that's always, I think, an important thing to keep in mind that your skills are important. Um, however, what you are able to do in terms of networking also is pretty important in the professional world. So finding people with similar fields, similar backgrounds can help you stay connected within your network. So new job or internship opportunities, um, even people who have the same job title or job roles as you, being able to bounce work ideas off of them, and honestly, just to have a few folks to joke around with or vent in your particular circumstances within your work is really cathartic and very nice to have. But the other big reason for this is because I believe it's really important for everyone to show up in their own communities. No matter what field you're in, it's so important to advocate for yourself and your people. So that can come in a few different ways. Of course, you know, small favors like connecting a work bud to your company's HR department if they have an open position, or it can be a little bit uh, bigger in terms of the scope, like supporting your coworkers' efforts in asking your org to have more inclusive hiring practices. Um, everything that you can do to uplift folks within the communities you're involved with is amazing. And I bring this up um, working for Chick Tech. Um, you know, the matter of the fact, it, the fact of the matter is that in technical fields, women, non binary folks, people of color are far underrepresented in these fields, even more so in leadership positions. So, whether you identify as someone with a marginalized identity or not, it's super important that we all support each other as allies and advocates. Um, once you are finding your community, whether that's through connections made at this internship, joining a club in school or outside of school, allow your people, your network to challenge you. Make sure that you are listening to them as they tell you to keep going, as they tell you what you're doing really well. Um, keep, keep an eye out for what you can do to be a better advocate in your community, to improve in your own work. And also, your community will be there to support you through stress and transitions. Um, I can't tell you how much value I've gotten personally out of my own network during the last year, just being able to vent and say how difficult it has been to manage stress during this time. And hearing that, um, you know, that I'm able to weather these challenges and, you know, people are able to help me out and vice versa is really important. So. Forming this kind of community and finding this kind of community takes time. It's definitely um, one of those longer lasting skills you'll want to develop, but you can start now. And even in this group here, you know, just earlier in the um, chat, we had so many folks who introduced themselves. I would highly recommend you scroll through that, reach out to one another, make connections, Ask someone what they do, what they're interested in. Ask someone to explain some of these really cool, complicated topics that their internships are all about. 
And I promise you that building this practice will make you and the people around you so much happier in work and in general in life. And the last bit of advice I would love to give you all is specifically around mentorship. I'm really happy to see that the majority of you do have some mentors or a mentor in your life that you're able to go to for advice and to um, get help with and advocate for you. And one of the really incredible things about the ACE program itself is that you have a built-in mentor with this experience. So think of this as a safe opportunity to ask what you may think are the dumbest questions or to show you how basic processes work or what it's like to um, ask for a raise. Ask all of those questions that you may not be sure, um, you know, that may come up or not in your working life. Because the truth is that there is nothing, uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question and you are not allowed to think that anymore. <laughs> your mentor will definitely agree. So um, I was very fortunate in my personal experience with ACE that I formed a really close relationship with my mentor, Linda. And to this day, I still get drinks or coffee with her at least once a year. She's a reference that I used on my job application to get the position I'm in now. And she's been a really fierce advocate for me throughout both my uh, career as well as my freelance job on the side. So I've been very lucky that I've had that amazing relationship develop. But whether or not you in this experience have a mentor that lasts just a few months or a few years or even a few decades, I really encourage you to soak up as much knowledge from them as you possibly can and keep them updated on how you're feeling as well. So if you're stressed, if you really like a certain skill that you're learning, if you want to try a new skill but aren't sure if it's for you or not, let them know what's going on and I'm positive that they'll be more than happy to help guide your interests or help you deal with any of those challenges that might be coming up within your internship process. Uh, another really cool thing about mentors is that they're able to guide you in discovering hidden talents you don't really understand you have yet. So definitely use that mentor experience as much as you possibly can. And I highly encourage you to explore this internship opportunities and see if any other mentor relationships pop up. So um, I would like to open the floor up to any questions. I'm so excited to be here. I hope that you have a wonderful experience during your internships and feel free if any of you would like to connect with me on LinkedIn or send me an email. If there's any questions I can answer to you afterwards, I am more than happy to. Uh, so feel free to either unmute yourself or ask some questions in one of the chat boxes. Thank you, Danny, for sharing all of that great, that great advice and um, the, uh, your experience. Um, I invite all of our uh, interns to um, ask any questions to Danny. Danny has been through this experience. So um, if you are interested in learning from her, um, please ask away now. Literally anything, <laughs> literally any question under the sun you may have. So you, Danny, you're getting a lot of thank yous and I'll add to that, thank you. Um, and we have one question, how does Chick Tech reach out to people? Thank you for letting me answer that. <laughs> so Chick Tech works with a lot of the schools nationally. We reach out to mostly high schools to find folks um, who identify as female or non-binary who don't really think of themselves as being interested in tech, but have the capacity to do really well in those fields. So we like um, connecting with teachers who can help us kind of decide who would be a really good fit for our programs. They're also completely open to anyone. So especially Portland folks, if you are in high school, feel free to check out, check out chicktech.org because um, we would be happy to have you at our programming. Great. Thank you. We've got another question in the Q&A. What do you think was the most beneficial skill or learning that you got from your experience with ACE? Good question. I think probably the 
biggest takeaway I had was to advocate for myself. Um, sometimes, especially when you're a younger professional, um, it can be a little bit intimidating to go into a, an office environment that is professional, established. Um, and sometimes I struggled with not wanting to ask questions or thinking that I might look stupid or, um, you know, that I wasn't uh, showing my worth as much as I could if I, you know, asked too many questions. And that was overwhelmingly not the case. I was very lucky in my experience to um, have a lot of really respectful folks ask proactively if I had any questions. So I think just doing whatever you can to kind of get over that awkwardness <laughs> of not wanting to put yourself out there and ask questions is one of the skills I still take forward to this day. Thank you. Um, got a few questions here. Uh, do you have any tips on how to make a good relationship with your mentor if it's fully virtual? Really good question. Um, I think one of the biggest things is if it's at all possible to do like Zoom video like this, that's a big thing. Just having that like, even if it's virtual, like face-to-face -face interaction is gonna be super important. I think also making sure that you set reg regular check-in dates as well so that you keep, um, keep the conversation going, make sure that there's not a whole lot of time that goes by where you haven't checked in with your mentor or you know letting questions build up on the side. I would say that um, take advantage of all the different tools that are available to connect. So whether it's um, Zoom, if your mentor has some sort of work instant messaging system, I know Slack is used in a lot of workplaces like mine, um, keeping all the communication open throughout those pretty consistently, I think is like, one of the biggest keys for virtual connection, but I know it's hard, man. It's pretty tough. And I think related to that, what is the best way to network as a high schooler? And I will add that um, we as the ACE team will be connecting you all both at the Midsummer Conference and we're looking at um, some kind of chat channel as well, probably Discord. Mm -hmm. That's a really great question. Um, I like to think of myself as kind of like an introverted extrovert. So networking really <laughs> freaks me out, even though I end up being okay once I'm there. Um, so if that sounds like you, uh, the advice I would have is to start really small, bring a friend to a networking event, even if it's virtual, just having someone there that you can have as kind of your backup <laughs> helps a little bit. You can encourage each other to go talk to someone that looks interesting. That's always a really good tip. And also start small. Um, look online and see if there are any meetup groups that are friendly to youth that are within your scope of work. So whether it's a women in tech group or if it's a, I don't know, mindfulness group, any of those kind of experiences can help you build your network and are really like low risk ways to start putting yourself out there. So what was the one thing that surprised, what was one thing that surprised you most during your internship and how prepared did you feel for your internship? That's a good question. I think the thing that surprised me most was um, how much I enjoyed seeing the, the end result of my work. I think with a lot of corporate jobs, sometimes it can feel like you don't get to quite enjoy the end product of your work because you're, you're involved with all the little things and don't quite see the end. So for me, being able to see all of these middle schoolers come in and actually get excited about these projects that we had planned was really wonderful and um, made me really value uh, service and being involved in the community as like a professional need that I had. I need to work somewhere that does some sort of good in the community and I can, you know, actually tangibly see that. So. Noticing little things like that about your experience, what really matters to you, what values you have as a professional, I think is a really good thing to keep, keep in mind. These are all great questions. Um, did you work with other interns or people that were your age during your internship? And if so, were there any particular challenges there? I didn't directly work with other interns or folks my age. However, there were 
folks working at the same time as me with the ACE program within IBM. So we kind of knew each other. Um, to be totally honest, uh, it was intimidating, um, especially with some of these internships that, um, that ACE offers. They're really technical. They're really cool deep dives, into, deep dives into specific areas of tech. And here I was putting on a camp for middle schoolers. So <laughs> sometimes I was feeling a little bit of that, I guess, I, imposter syndrome, feeling like maybe uh, I didn't fit into this group of folks or I wasn't quite as technical as these other folks. Um, so there was a little bit of that going on in my head. But again, just knowing that um, we were all selected for these ACE internships. We're already doing really great for ourselves and just putting ourselves out there is a really good thing to keep cycling back in your head. Um, and also making those connections with other people regardless of what fields they're in. So, you know, these other folks that were working there who were working in more technical fields, it was really cool, A, learning about what they did and B, being able to just ex keep expanding that network. Even if I wasn't able to, um, have a direct connection in my professional life with this person. They may know someone down the road that isn't a company I'd like to apply to. So being able to like network with folks um, your own age who are in different fields is like very, very good too. And I think you, you started to touch on this, but um, how, did you, how did you overcome in, imposter syndrome and did you find that your internship helped you at all? Um, Good question. I don't think imposter syndrome ever truly goes away, especially as we develop in our careers and you end up taking on either new responsibilities or new roles, new companies. Um, so kind of knowing that in itself is almost comforting in a way, knowing this is always going to happen. I've succeeded in the past and I thought I was imposter syndrome back then. Here I am today. I've moved forward and I'm able to um, say that I've accomplished something in the past. So knowing that that voice may keep coming back um, is almost comforting in that you know it's it's going to tell you garbage <laughs> more often more often than you might want it to to tell you. So I think that's one key aspect to it. Another key aspect is to talk about it. To be totally honest, um, having having those frank discussions with your community, your coworkers, even your boss or your mentor. Um, can really help both with letting those kind of concerns out, but also proactively asking for feedback, you know, saying, I'm really worried that I'm not strong enough in this particular skill. What do you think? How do you think I'm doing with this? And how can I start to improve or learn more about this? So being very open and honest with what you feel your deficits are is, I think, also a really good skill to have. There's actually one question there I wanted to answer and I really liked, I really liked the question. It's of course from Jackie. Did you make a mistake during your internship? How did you address it with your mentor? I ask this because I mistake, make mistakes all the time. Yes, I made a significant <laughs> mistake in my internship. Um, just a brief backstory. I was tasked to create a promotional video for this, um, for this camp interviewing one of the students that had participated in a year past. I'd never done any sort of video production. This was a little bit before like camera phones were good. So it was like with an actual camera and it was confusing. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I ended up setting up this person to be interviewed right in front of a really bright window. So you could see nothing on film. It was just like witness protection mode. Couldn't see the person at all. I tried to do my best editing it. It just was not working. And my mentor was honest with me. She was like, Danny, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed in this. And I was like, yeah, I know it's kind of bad. <laughs> like, I totally see that. And I think the thing I learned from that is, again, asking for help. I knew going into that, that I was a little bit out of my depth. I needed some more support but I want to just push through. I wanted to show that I was able to do this and, you know, be really cool in the way that, you know, creating something from scratch, but the end product showed, I really didn't know quite what I was doing and it would have turned out a lot better had I just asked a couple of questions or asked for some advice. So I think the biggest takeaway from that is if you have an inkling that you might run into some problems or <laughs> you not don't know quite what you're doing, 
ask and it'll nine times out of 10 make the end product like even better than if you didn't ask at all. So that's generally what I try to do <laughs> instead of making those huge mistakes. And just, I'm gonna out Jackie, she is our executive director. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie, for being here. Um, and that, that leads into uh, and this question of how can we start awkward, tough conversations? Uh, for example, not being really interested in the task you are assigned to with your mentor. Yeah, good question. I am hands down a conflict averse person. It makes me very nervous. I like keeping things cool and friendly and calm and collected. So I totally understand the impulse to not want to start digging into any weird topics. I think the best way that I have found to come across to start talking about some of those things is to almost like put a little bit of a positive spin on it. So like, for instance, if there's a particular task you're not really liking, something along the lines of, hey, I've been working on so-and-so, and it's been kind of interesting, but I've noticed through working on that, I'm really into this and this. So kind of acknowledging that you're not super enjoying this particular aspect, knowing that you know you have the option to tell that to your mentor, suggesting another thing that you could be doing, or asking their advice and saying, hey, I'm not super into this project, but um, I do like being creative. I do like problem solving. What would you suggest as another task or project I could explore in this field that would help me develop that? So were you nervous or scared during the beginning of your internship and how were you able to get through that feeling? Yes, I was super nervous and I'm not sure if you still do this to this day, but when I first met my mentor, my mom was with me. So I also felt a little bit like I'm here with my mom, you know, so it was a little bit awkward in that way to try to make myself appear professional and eager. Um, especially being a young woman and having my mom there as well. So I was a little bit nervous making sure that, you know, I seemed professional. So I think the biggest thing is just let yourself shine through. Um, even if you're kind of a quirky, I consider myself a little bit of a quirky character. <laughs> so letting that come through and um, just let yourself have some, you know, true moments with your mentor while you're first meeting them. Um, break the ice by asking them about something in their personal life. Ask them, you know, if they have any kids, if they have any pets. I think that having those little vulnerable moments can really help break the ice and kind of like just take the temperature down for like everyone in the room. And I think this is the last one um, for now. Did you feel pressured to be over professional and serious? Yeah, um, as you can see, I've kind of shed that a little bit over time. I tend to be a pretty lighthearted person now. Um, back in the past, I think, again, coming from the perspective of a young woman in tech, it's, it was very important for me to be taken seriously and to be able to um, stand up in terms of my technical skills uh, compared to all the folks who are around me or the people that I would be working with. So definitely, I've definitely felt that pressure. I think that when you start working in an office environment, you're going to meet so many different people with so many different interaction styles. And some of those people will be a little bit more stoic, a little bit more professional. Um, just know that that's okay. And you are able to be as um, stoic or as bubbly as you would like, regardless of um, your age, how you look, your gender, anything like that. Um, your skills should speak for themselves. Um, if you ever do feel like you're um, not fitting in or like your personality isn't quite a match, um, that's something I would probably talk to my manager about and just kind of take the pulse and say, you know, is this a good fit for me? Am I, <laughs> am I coming across a way that I don't want to? So yeah, I felt that pressure before. And I think, like I've mentioned, keeping, keeping your true self and, um, you know, letting that be okay is probably the main suggestion I would have. Yay. <laughs> I'll add to, um, for everybody that you can also reach out to your teacher monitor. Everyone will get, have a teacher monitor who is, um, there to support you 
And so you, if you have, if you need feedback or you need a sounding board, you can reach out to them um, with anything that comes up. I think with that, we covered the last question. Danny, thank you again so much for coming. You've shared so much great advice and so many great stories from your time as an ACE intern. I think you splashed up your email and other um, connections. Um, do you wanna, are we able to put those in the chat just in case people want to um, reference them? Um, but otherwise, it was so great having you. Um, Thank you so much for coming. Um, Thank you so much. It was so great being here. And I dropped my email and LinkedIn in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Connect with me on LinkedIn. And congrats. Enjoy your internships, everyone. Thanks, Danny. All right. And the rest of us interns, we can get started on our orientation here. All righty. Okay, so back to you. Um, planning interns, internships for the summer um, has been really complicated. Um, due to COVID-19. So um, it, it looks different for everybody. Um, and the impacts on workplaces and possible transitions back to in-person will also affect everybody differently. The good news is, is I'm so pleased to have 70 internships to offer all of you, despite this chaotic time. Over 450 applications applied to the ACE internship program this year. Um, so again, to echo Danny, congratulations. Um, to those who were selected, you all here. More than ever, this was a really competitive summer to get an ACE internship. And know that your experience, your success, and your dedication this summer continues to help us make the case for why more mentors should participate in summers to come. You are now part of a very special community, as is Danny. Um, and you can see this group shot of the 2019 interns here. 2020 wasn't able to gather, but they earn their place as ACE alumni just as much as all the rest, and now it's your turn. The ACE program started with only six interns in 1989, and since then has served over 4,000 interns. Tonight's orientation usually takes place in person, so thank you all for joining virtually. You'll get a chance to meet some of your fellow ACE interns, at least online during the summer. Rachel said we're gonna have a couple of different types of events as well as a um, method of communication for you guys um, to engage with each other. This summer, you'll experience firsthand the Saturday Academy mission as the ACE program is part of Saturday Academy. Serving over 6,000 children annually in Oregon and Southwest Washington, Saturday Academy programs, classes, camps, and apprenticeships are designed to spark curiosity and cultivate an intrinsic, sustained love of learning and exploration. We are 501c3 nonprofit organization in affiliation with the University of Portland. Saturday Academy has straight, stayed true to its mission since 1983, including the ACE program, which is on our 32nd year. Some of you might be thinking, wow, Mar, it's really time to update the photo, but this photo is actually from the 1990s at the center of the coastal margin observation and prediction. And I left it here so you can realize you are joining a special and elite group with a long history. We now have many generations of mentors and interns, even ACE alum returning now to become mentors. This year, one of our teacher monitors is a returning ACE alum. So let's get into what your summer will really look like. I want you to know that above all, we want you to have a great experience and feel like you had a really educational and productive summer. Part of that is for you to really take advantage of the supports that we have in place for you. First of all, you'll definitely get a lot of support from your mentor at your internship. Their goal is to provide a professional and educational experience with clear expectations and feedback. They want to see you succeed professionally and personally. 
They not only give time over the summer, but also sponsorship. For some of you this summer, more than time spent with your mentor, there may be co-mentors like grad students or technicians. There may be other high school or college interns working with you too. In addition, you will get to know each other, your fellow ACE interns throughout the summer. We will be getting an ACE directory soon to help you get in touch with each other and we will also be connecting you um, at events. You will also get to meet your teacher monitors like Rachel mentioned earlier. They'll provide you and your mentor support throughout the program. Keep an eye on your email and phone for an invitation to meet your teacher monitor in the next few days. They are your first point of contact for issues or problems this summer. In particular, they will touch base with you for two official check-ins this summer and to help you with thank you letters at the end of the summer. You also have the ACE coordinator and Saturday Academy staff, that's me and Rachel. We are available for your questions and concerns. And while you are at your internship, we work with Saturday Academy to provide this summer's conferences like tonight's event, and we will be the one who gets you your stipend check. And I'll send out documentation of your ACE experience at the end of the summer. And how will I be getting in touch with you this summer? Email. Check your inbox often for ACE updates. Also consider adding me as a contact to ensure my emails arrive to your inbox. And we can't forget your parents and guardians. It's important support role to help your student participate fully in the ACE experience. Remind your students to get enough rest and be understanding that a work week is a lot. Your student may be a bit overwhelmed at first and parents, the students are in charge this summer. This might be a change to take the back seat. Keep in mind, you are certainly welcome to set up a quick, quick introduction meeting to see what your student and mentor might be up to but try to let the student take the lead this summer. Okay, now for a quick activity. Look at the following examples and decide which of the supports I've previously listened you would contact in each of the instances. In scenario one, you are sick one day from your internship. Who would you contact? A staff, mentor, or your teacher monitor? Go ahead and put that in the chat. Would you contact your ACE staff, mentor, or teacher monitor if you are sick one day from your internship? Rachel, do we have an answer yet? It's unanimous. Your mentor. Ding -ding. That is correct. All right, you guys are ready to go on to level two. You didn't receive your stipend check. Who would you contact? A staff, your mentor, or your teacher monitor? Yes, A staff. That's correct. All right, level three. You need to switch some days of your internship. And this one is a little tricky. It's, it's the toughest question we have. So there might be two answers for this one. All right, it's looking like a uh, mentor and teacher monitor. You got it. Okay, so let's go back one, one by one and go over why these particular people are the answer. You need to contact your mentor because they need to know if you're not logging on or coming into the office because you're sick one day so they don't worry about you. In scenario two, <clears throat> you probably wouldn't have received your check because of an issue like logistics, we didn't have the right address. Um, so that's something that you would get in touch with us as soon as possible to make sure it's corrected. Um, this summer, you'll receive your stipend in two payments if you are set to receive a stipend. One, once, once you have started your internship, make sure your teacher monitor knows your start date and you confirm with them once you have begun your internship. And you'll get your second check in early September. It's important to remember that stipends are not wages. They are meant to help cover costs like supplies needed for the internship. So we're not going to issue W-2s. 
It's also important, very important to confirm your mailing address with me if you are using a temporary address this summer or if your address has changed since you submitted your application. Those are common issues um, for not receiving a stipend check. And in scenario three, your teacher monitor and mentor both need to know because your mentor needs to know the days that you're coming into the office and logging on or not. And your teacher monitor needs to know because they are planning your two site visits. So they don't wanna plan a site visit on a day where you aren't there. So as things change from the calendar that you've submitted, you wanna go ahead and update it and let your teacher monitor know what to expect if there's any major changes. Okay. Good job, Mara, everybody. Yeah, Mara, I will. I will underline one answer that if something really drastic happens and you need to change, then then include us as well. Yes. Yes. Um, thank you, mm -hmm. Naomi. All right. So, with all of these supports in place, you might be starting to wonder what is expected of you. So. I know you have all had the chance to go over the intern expectations agreements that came with your intern form, but let's take a few minutes to highlight the important areas, right? So let's begin with attendance and participation. So great job to all of you for getting in touch with your mentors to set up your calendars like we just talked about. Keep in mind that attendance is an expectation for the ACE program. That includes the schedule that you agreed on with your mentor, as well as your events. So attending, attending orientation, you can check that one off the list, and conferences, which is midsummer conference and symposium. So symposium is um, going to be on August 12th, and midsummer conference is gonna be on July 15th. At midsummer conference, we're gonna cover college preparation, career and networking workshops, and symposium preparation. At Symposium, you guys are going to present everything that you've done over the summer. All right, expectation number two, workplace safety and professionalism. It's important to conform to all rules and regulations of the internship site, especially health and safety practices. Basically, if you're not sure of something, ask. Above all, we are working to keep everyone healthy and safe this summer as we figure out the best way to work during a pandemic and transition to post-pandemic life. Some of you have remote internships, some of you will work in a lab all summer, and some of you will spend time doing both. What is most important is communication about COVID and safety. Ask if a certain policy is unclear, make sure you understand what happens if there is an exposure in the office, and communicate if you have special expectations of your mentor. Now, let's talk about the professionalism aspect. As far as dress, you do wanna show respect for your mentor and set yourself apart. Dress in a way to show how you will do your work and where you wanna go in your career. Even if you are working remotely, show up to meetings dressed appropriately. If you aren't sure what a normal dress code looks like in your office or lab, that's a really good question for your mentor. You don't have to overdress, but just make sure that you're dressing to show respect for your mentor, right? And dress is just one part of being professional. If you are ever in doubt about professional standards, ask your teacher monitor. It could be anything. If you were a little late this morning, how would you talk to your teacher monitor about that? Or how would you request time away from the computer while you go get your vaccine or have another doctor's appointment? Another aspect is you want to put away all your cell phones from the minute you start the workday unless you need them for work-related communication. Anything distracting, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, can wait until your break, lunch, or the end of the day. At the end of the summer, you will write thank you letters to the people you worked with or who funded your position. What a great chance to let your mentor know how much you appreciate the internship. And more than good manners, um, this is another opportunity to make a really good impression on your mentor and your co-mentors, the people in your working group. And this will really cement those lasting connections in the STEM community. And lastly, <clears throat> communication and documentation is very important. 
especially this summer with so many of you working remotely and figure out, figuring out how to be in a workplace safely. Talk with your mentor. Make sure you let your mentor know about your progress on your work. If any problems come up, they are there for you and your teacher monitors are there for you too to take the first step and communicate. Ask questions like, what do you expect from our routine check-ins? What are my expectations for contact? Will it be over email or another chat channel? During what hours? What are my project due dates? What should it look like? So the key here is going to be to over communicate. Ask those questions. Let your mentor know what, the, what you're doing. Ask them what they're doing. It's going to really help you develop a relationship and help develop your skills for success throughout the eight weeks. All right, now let's move on for some tips to success. It's important to discuss your goals early and often with your mentor. For example, if you want to do a paper this summer, but you never let your mentor know, you might be headed for disappointment. Additionally, be ready for feedback and criticism. That's how you learn. Try to keep an open mind and not get discouraged. Your mentor is investing in you. It's important to remember, nobody is perfect. And this summer, a lot like Danny talked about, you are starting or really extending your professional network. Mentors might be able to write you a recommendation, share your information with colleagues, or even continue working with you. Keep in touch with your mentor and ace friends. There's nothing better than watching each other's confidence and experience grow. Tap into our ACE alum LinkedIn group and get in touch with other mentors and past ACE interns. So tip number three is embrace this summer as a great time to build and actively seek out your network. Another thing to remember is no one mentor can do everything for you. Focus on what your mentor can share with you and realize that you may need to go somewhere else for some things. For example, your mentor might be really great at training you in technical skills, but you might want to find another mentor to help you coach on selecting a college or what path you would want to take um, after high school. And again, communication is key. Ask questions, share your experience, talk about concerns or stressors. That's very important. And lastly, keep a logbook by your side at all times. This will help you build your symposium presentation. But more than that, if it's a reference book for when your mentors ask, what have you been working on? Or what questions do you have? Some great advice from a teacher monitor was to actually create your logbook in a PowerPoint presentation when you take pictures of what you're working on, when you make notes of what you've done, about your progress, your questions, you can then edit that and that right there can become your symposium presentation. It's a really great idea. Keep in mind, all of our resources and tips for success can be found on saturdayacademy.org slash current interns. Lots of resources there for you. All right, so I bet you are ready to get going on your interns internship, but there are just a few more tasks to keep in mind first. So get ready to start on your first day with your best foot forward. Read articles about what you will be doing. Learn about programs you will be involved with. This can be part of convincing your mentors that you are serious about your work. Ask questions and become an expert in your internship field. You may also want to touch base with your schools about credit for ACE. In the beginning of October, we will send you a letter that you can turn into your counselor to see if school credit is an option for your internship. There is a sample posted in the resources sections of the current internship page. It's a great idea to check in with your school to see how the school might apply your ACE experience. Is it school credit? Is it volunteer hours? It depends on the school, but it can help to check with your counselor before school gets out rather than waiting into the fall because you might have to keep a log of hours and activities, things like that. It's really great to check before. And then at last, you get to start. In the first weeks, you'll probably do a lot of listening and observing. 
Don't be afraid to make mistakes as long as you learn from them. <clears throat> like Danny said, she learned from her mistake with the camera, right? Another former intern's advice is you just have to be okay with having no idea what's going on at first. And again, starting a logbook on that first day of your internship. You can write down names of people that you meet, places to find files, because your mentor won't always be available for questions. Your logbook can be a really useful resource in addition to tracking everything you've done. When you get a complicated set of instructions, listen carefully and take notes. Ask about what the final result should look like. Much like I recommended this evening, bring a pen and paper everywhere you go. And if you get down to only a few days worth of activities, give your mentor a heads up that you will need to discuss further projects with them. All right, so since this night is getting you comfortable with starting your internships, I wanna know what questions do you have pending in the chat that maybe me and Rachel can talk through um, so that we can help you feel ready to go for your first day. Feel free to ask anything in the chat or the Q&A. What do symposium projects <clears throat> usually look like? That's a great question. Symposium projects usually look like a brief overview of your summer and a deeper dive into the projects that you were assigned. Um, and it will be done in front of a smaller group of peers and they'll ask you questions about the work. Um, so really you're gonna talk about your main um, sort of priorities that you did over the summer and then what work that you did throughout the weeks to address them in addition to sort of a brief overview of your mentors, who your mentors are, what your organization does, um, and so on. So another question, if we are interested in doing a paper, when should we notify our mentors now or right when the internship starts? I would bring that up early on in the internship. I would encourage you to talk about your objectives and goals early on in the internship and bring that up as one of your objectives and goals um, and talk about, have sort of a proposal in mind. So what would you wanna write a paper about? Um, so that your mentor has a clear idea of how they can support you in that paper um, and what they can do to help you um, so that your paper is a success throughout the internship. And let's see, a question about symposium. Yes, it will be virtual this year as well as the Midsummer Conference. Um, and we do, do we still have the symposium presentations from last year up on the website? Yes. So you could look, especially even at your, some, we have a lot of returning mentors. So you could find the um, intern who was at your organization last year and check out their presentation in advance and I will try and find that link and if I can't find it it is somewhere <laughs> where is that Barra? It's on um, the website if you go to our main program page you click symposium and then it'll bring you to the um, 2020 presentations um, you can go ahead and view all of them there it's sorted by topic and organization. Thank you. And what kinds of things should um, be included in the, a logbook? Everything. I would encourage you to write down um, almost every question you think of, every direction you can, every you know confusing thing, every project you work on. Um, if you take pictures and your logbook is virtual, I would encourage you to put the pictures in your logbook. Your logbook is really to help you remember and to help your mentor understand what you did throughout the summer. Um, so you could really include everything that you're doing in your logbook. You don't have to sort of copy and paste if you did a big paper into your logbook, um, but it should be a summary of what you're doing each day, what your questions are, how you address them, maybe who your coworkers are, stuff like that, um, so that you can go back through and say, here's how I did that, and then reference it moving forward. 
Um, and then it will also be really, really helpful for when you go to make your symposium presentation at the end of the summer. And I'll add that that's also a good question for your mentor. There may be something specific that, um, that they recommend you add um, as well. And definitely you can add the, the work you do to your portfolio or resume um, for sure. Uh, I'd highly recommend doing that. And then um, if COVID restrictions are lifted, would the interns have the opportunity to go to the physical workplace or is that a question for the mentor? Yes, that's something you'll wanna to talk to your mentor about. Did you wanna to add to that? Yeah, and I would add that it really just depends on the workplace. Um, some workplaces um, are not thinking about going back even if um, COVID restrictions are lifted and some um, would go back in a partial sort of hybrid model um, and that might not include interns. Um, so again, it will really just depend on the workplace and that's a really great question for your mentor. And also, it really depends on you and your comfort level and your family. So definitely be communicating where you're at. And um, I think for all the internships that were marked as hybrid, it's, understa it's understood that it, that's going to need to be a conversation to make sure that both you and the mentor are, are comfortable. And if it's uh, all virtual, um, the site visits will be virtual as well. So uh, definitely not expecting um, people to commute from uh, a long ways away for those virtual ones. You don't have to physically be there, but we want you on the Zoom call for the site visits, so. And the, the same goes for your teacher monitor. It really depends on both of your comfort levels. So your check-ins might be all virtual as well, or you, if you might have the opportunity to meet at the workplace. Um, so it's gonna be a lot of communicating <laughs> this summer. And Caroline Haycraft, thank you. She is a teacher monitor. Um, she's also been an instructor for a long time for Saturday Academy. So um, all of your teacher monitors will be reaching out to you shortly. And so you'll be in cohorts also. So each teacher monitor has about anywhere from, um, I don't know, six to 10 interns. And so hopefully your cohort will also be connected. Did I miss any? Oh, let's go to the Q&A. Uh, when should we expect to be introduced to our teacher monitors? The teacher monitors are going to be reaching out to you um, soon. They have your info um, and they will be reaching out to you um, pretty soon once the program sort of gets started. Um, so like we said, you're going to want to um, keep your phone on you, check your voicemails, check your emails. Um, and if you have an email that oftentimes things get sent to spam, you're gonna to wanna to check that spam filter again, um, just to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, so in the first couple weeks um, of your internship or in a couple of weeks leading up to your internship, they're gonna be reaching out to you directly to introduce themselves. So another question, are we submitting these logbooks anywhere aside from the symposium? No, these, for the most part, these logbooks are for you. Um, but I would encourage you to make them as detailed as possible because that is going to be the most useful. Um, ACE does have it as a deliverable, um, but we won't be asking for copies of them. Um, we really want you to make it as useful as possible for you. And what do you do during the site visits? That's a really great question. During the site visits, your teacher monitor is going to sit down with you and talk about what you're working on, talk about what the atmosphere at your internship is like. It's basically just a check-in or to gauge the temperature of how your internship is going. It's a really great space if you have any issues that maybe you don't feel comfortable talking about with your men mentor for one reason or another, or you have sort of goals that you haven't been able to sort of talk about. Um, it's a really great space to sort of freely talk about um, how you're doing, where are you going, and where are you wanting to go. Um, so it's the time is yours, and the teacher monitor is there to listen to you and ask you questions to guide the conversation. At, later on the site visit, the teacher monitor is going to do the same for the mentor. 
Um, and it really just helps us identify if there's any um, glaring problems. Um, so I would encourage you to be as honest as possible um, during your site visits and to share with us your experience so we can improve um, your experience. Thank you. Let's see, can we work on projects outside of our designated time and will that count towards our required time? And I'll start just by saying that's a conversation with your mentor about what would be projects outside and, and what, what are inside. Um, do you wanna to add to that, Mara? No, I would encourage you to work during work hours so that you have the resource of your mentor there for questions. Um, but to echo what Rachel said, if it's common at your organization, um, go ahead, but I wouldn't make plans to do that until you've spoken with your mentor. And in your experience, how often are the Zoom calls? Every day or a few days a week? Um, I've encouraged mentors to do check-ins as often as possible. Um, I've actually encouraged mentors to do daily check-ins. I, I, I communicated that to them during their mentor orientation. Um, but some mentors have, um, you know, their organization's policies that call for check-ins maybe once a week, maybe as little as once a month. It just really depends on the organization. And I think it, it would really depend on you as well. Um, if that touch point, that FaceTime is really important to you and you want more Zoom calls, that would be something that you wanna ask for um, from your mentor. If they're a little bit less important to you and you'd rather just do you know, a daily chat through Slack or through um, Google Chats, then, then that's fine too. What's important is that you communicate those needs to your mentor, right? Um, so again, it's just going to depend on the internship um, and depends on what your preferences are and what your mentor's preferences are as well. I'll say that at Saturday Academy, we check in for half an hour every morning on Zoom. Saves a lot of emails, it turns out. It does. Um, but every workplace is different. And so you'll, I would just ask what the, what the culture is and, and how people like to communicate. There's so many different ways now and everybody has a different preference. Um, so yeah, definitely share your preference and, and hear from the mentor. Um, and I'll add to, if your mentor is not checking in super frequently, so likely a co-mentor or somebody else will be. Great questions, everybody. Yeah. Keep them coming. Like Danny said, there's no such thing as a dumb question. So um, if you're wondering it, I'm sure another person is. So feel free to type it into the chat and we will get it answered. Will we be sharing this presentation later? And yes, we are recording it. Where, where can, will we email it or just post it on the website? At that same current interns um, resources link, um, the link will be posted there and you can watch it on YouTube as many times as you'd like until you get um, all of the information you need out of it. When will we get contact information for other ACE interns, especially people interning in your organization? I will be sending out an ACE directory, um, which will have all of the contact information for all of the interns. So if you see a familiar name or somebody in your organization, you can reach out to them. Um, and that will be going out either, um, it will in the first couple weeks of June, um, when you guys are starting your internships, and we're also going to be launching a um, communication platform, like Rachel mentioned. Um, it's going to be uh, a Discord style um, uh, server for you guys to communicate. So um, you'll be able to engage with your fellow mentor, or excuse me, fellow interns that way as well. And I would definitely encourage you all to, to reach out to each other. Um, chances are you'll all be going through different but similar types of experiences in science and engineering.
uh, will the communication platform be on Discord or on another system? We are still exploring that. And so we'll, we'll share that info when we share the directory. Um, so how soon should we be getting back in contact with our mentor to discuss the logistics of actively starting the internship, for example, if we need to set up a Zoom link? Okay, that is a really great question. Um, if you haven't heard from your mentor about onboarding and your first day logistics, sort of like the week before, I would definitely encourage you to email them and ask um, sort of what onboarding looks like, what links you might need, um, what accounts you might need, um, if you, you know, need a particular email address with them, or if you're just going to use your personal email. Those are all really good questions. I'm assuming most of your mentors are sort of organizing that for you right now behind the scenes. Um, you just might not know it yet. Um, so like I said, if you haven't heard from them, um, sort of the week before you're starting your internship, feel free to email them um, and just touch back in and, um, and ask those same questions. And that includes if you need, um, if you are working virtually and you need a laptop, um, if you've only got Chrome and your workplace is using something different, definitely connect um, both with us as a staff, if you need some technical assistance and, and your mentor's workplace may also be, will also be able to support you. So um, wait to hear from them and then let them know, see what the needs are. And if you are needing something, definitely let us know. Um, so we'll send out more, more info about this Discord thing. It's a just a communication channel. Um, there are many out there, so that's why we're we're kind of exploring it. But um, we will we'll let you know how to to get it set up if that's the one that we find the most useful. And I can't answer more because I haven't used it, so, so I don't know yet. Um, but we're told that it's a it's a Mars exploring it. It's a good way for people to connect. Okay, so while we wrap up, um, I just want to say that this internship is about you and what you put into it so you can get all that you can from it. I hope that you value it, value it, and I hope that you'll realize what a great opportunity it is um, and that it comes with some high expectations. I can't wait to see you all in action um, and making it work despite the chaos of the transition to post-pandemic life um, after COVID. I can't wait to see you taking initiative and making a great impression with your mentors and using your time wisely because I'll tell you this summer does go by quickly and who knows Maybe one day you'll pay it forward and that could be helping a younger student when you return to school in the fall. Um, or it could be someday returning to be an ACE mentor yourself. Um, and so with that, I will say thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, have a great evening. I will see you at the Midsummer Conference in July. If you have any questions, you can stay on the webinar. Me and Rachel will hang out until if there's a few more questions that come through on chat, we will be here. Otherwise, you can email our ACE email. That's A-S-E at SaturdayAcademy.org with any questions you have. Um, and um, our uh, other contact information is on our website that you can visit to find. Um, otherwise, you are free to go enjoy your evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Enjoy your summer. Bye, everyone. <laughs>